that's a good point to, to bring up. When we're measuring current, we use an ammeter. Two M's, E-T-E-R, ammeter. It's an amp meter, but we call it an ammeter. An ammeter, and does anybody remember from way back in grade nine, do you connect it in series or in parallel? Series. Maybe you just remember that phrasing as a rote statement. You always connect an ammeter in series. I'll talk about what that means in just a second. But an ammeter does, yeah, it gets connected in series. Can, being connected in series just means in a consecutive sequence or row. Okay, it does get connected in series. So I want to make sure that we have this in a schematic diagram so we can be reminded of what went on way back in grade 9. And I'm always impressed with how much people at the school remind, or remember from grade 9. You guys really do retain quite a lot of information. I'm quite happy with that. But I want to make sure that we've got the connection idea here. So we've got an electrochemical cell. Actually, two of them end to end. Can you see that that's two cells end to end from your grade 9 days? That looks a little bit like two batteries. Only a battery really for our vocab purposes, just so you know, when we talk about a battery, it's two, two or more cells that are connected together. A cell is one of them. A battery is a bunch of them. Okay? So we got a small bunch, a pair of cells connected in series. We'll call it a battery now because they are connected in series like this. And we got a positive end. The positive gets drawn on the, the fat end. They got a negative end. You know, you look at these, these batteries you buy in the store, they have a little positive and a negative drawn on either end. So we've got a positive end and a negative end. And if we're drawing this circuit, I'm going to draw it so the circuit is uh, turned off, but we'll know that it could be turned on. What's this that I'm drawing right now? Switch. A switch, you got it. Now this is a, a broken circuit because there's a switch that's open. The connection has been broken. And I'm going to draw this element here. Does anybody know what this element is? It's a light bulb. Beautiful. Nice little curly filament inside. A little light bulb. And a light bulb is what I'm going to use for my load in this circuit. What's a load? Uses the energy. Yeah, the thing that uses the energy in the circuit. So a light bulb is a nice simple load. I like to talk about light bulbs because when the load is being used, it's visible that something's happening, right? And we can talk about a glowing light bulb. It's very simple to discuss. Okay, so the, here's a, a load. It's a light bulb. And the circuit continues on. And I'm going to leave an opening in my circuit. I'm going to be intentional about leaving an opening in my circuit. And I'm going to continue on like this. Now, the reason I want to leave an opening here is because I know I could draw a wire there and turn the switch on, and this light bulb would go on. But we're talking about measuring current. So what should I put right there in that part of the, cir part of the circuit? Yeah, you got it. Capital A, and I'm only doing it in red to make it pop. A. And I would make it so that the wire connects to one of the leads on the ammeter and it connects to the other lead on the ammeter so that current can flow in one side and out the other side. And effectively, well, by whatever mechanism is inside of an ammeter, I'm not going to go down that path right now, but there is a mechanism inside of an ammeter that can measure the flow rate of coulombs per second going in one side and out the other side. It's a little electromagnetic circuit. Okay? So that's what's happening inside of there. Got to flow in one side and out the other side to count the flow rate. Okay? Now here's something that I want to I, I want to confess something to you. It's sort of historical confession. It's not my fault. But what we just talked about in terms of current was that electrons are what's flowing when electricity is moving, right? We know it's the electrons that are flowing. At some point in history, when we look at these ideas of a positive and negative pole to a battery, somebody said, we think that charges are moving, but since we don't have the tools to see subatomically which ones are moving, we're just going to guess. And we're going to guess that it's the positive ones that are moving. And so somebody, you know, ye old queens, royal thinker, decided that what's moving is the positives. And so the positives are leaving from the positive end, going through the circuit, when, of course, when the circuit's shut. And they would be going through this circuit, and they go all the way around the circuit, and what they called that was conventional current flow. Okay, I'm going to write it all out. Conventional current. Because as a convention, they decided that current must flow from the positive to the negative terminal. <laughs> And 
And then at some point later in history, some people came along and said, oh, wait a minute, we understand the structure of these particles we call the atoms. And we recognize at this point that it's not the positives that are moving. We know now that in fact, it's the electrons. And I'm going to write that as an E with a negative sign. Electron flow is what's really happening. Here's the thing. If negatives leave this side, let's say that five coulombs of electrons move, leave the negative side, how many electrons are going to arrive at this side, at the positive side? Oh, if the switch is shut. Five coulombs, right? Five coulombs leave here. Does this side become po more positive by a factor of five coulombs? Yeah, it loses electrons, so it becomes more positive by five coulombs. What if five protons, were, uh, coulombs of protons were able to leave the positive side and come over here? How much more positive would the negative side become then? Five coulombs, right? It's kind of an opposite thing. So whether five coulombs of electrons went this way or whether five coulombs of protons went this way, because the charges happen to be opposite, it's the same net effect. So we got this historical little quirk where everything, every time somebody talks about current, they're kind of talking about a mistake, that positives were flowing. But as it turns out, since the charge of a positive and the charge of a negative is equal in magnitude, that is a proton and an electron have the same charge, whether it's a coulomb of positive charges moving or a coulomb of negative charges moving in the opposite direction, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. The only time it really starts to make a difference is when we're in electromagnetism, which is more uh, happening later on after, after the holidays in this course and happening a fair bit in grade 12 physics, where really which one is moving, the positive charge or the negative charge, really matters a whole lot when you're making an electromagnet. In the case of these circuits, I just want to put it in there as, a, as an aside little fact so that later on when I tell you this, when we do electromag, you say, oh, Mr. Killens, you weren't lying to us all along, okay? It's the electrons that are moving, I get that, but we always talk about conventional current flow. Now, some people say, why don't we switch over to talking about electron flow rather than currents? Well, I mean, I guess the fact is, all the textbooks have been written. The machines have been calibrated to talk about current flow. All the labels are there for current flow. And what's more, what are there more of, if we want to think de democratically, what are there more of, physicists or, in, or uh, electricians in the world? Just by democracy, way more electricians. And the electricians are working with conventional current flow. So as physicists, we're going to say, hey, man, just go with the flow, man. No pun intended. OK? So we're going to go with conventional current flow. And the symbol for conventional current flow, as we said before, is I. OK, so this current is flowing from the positive side to the negative side. It's going through the ammeter. And that ammeter may be counting how many coulombs of charge go through it per second. I want to try an example.